Hello guys, good day. This is Anne of Reinforce Me Club, your fellow positive reinforcer. Today, I am going to talk about how did I quit alcohol and become sober for over 10 years. Now, I wouldn't say that I, it's an addiction. But way back when I was 18 to 23 years old, I am now over 30, I couldn't sleep without drinking alcohol. I always have alcohol reserve in the fridge because I, I love it cold. So the only chance that I could ever sleep is to drink. So that's what happened. And uh, the reason why I drink before because it makes me forget about the problems that I'm facing. Imaginary problems frustrations, anger, anything I have in line that I even hate the world. I even hate my life before, myself. Whenever I drink, I forget about it. And in a period of time, like two, two hours, three hours, I'm happy enough to get by that I forget about the important stuff in life that I run away from because I let alcohol solve the problem. So way back then, yeah, I was able to get by drinking one or two glasses of heavy of those heavy drinks every day. My dad, you know, he he understands. He I don't know if he supports me, but he supported me, but uh, he understands that uh, that's how it is. You know, as a teenager, as a young person, you know, sometimes you you have down times. And, you know, my dad treat me like he has a son. He raised me like he has a son. But when I'm in danger, he treats me like a real daughter. He protects me. But he'd let me do whatever I want, though. He trusts me a lot. Now, let's go back to the alcohol mode. So, other than my daily alcohol dose... Especially, it actually got worse from the time when I graduated my course, my degree, because I wasn't able to get a job for two years. So, yeah, I, I, I don't drink when I'm working. But, you know, I sometimes I have to face the hangover moments. But I was still able to manage it. Unlike this time, if I ever drink, gosh, I, I couldn't imagine my life. I don't want to drink anymore. So the first thing that's that's you have to keep in mind that alcohol can can forget can help you forget about important things in life, serious stuff. Things that you cannot face or you don't have the guts or the balls <laughs> to face at the moment. And you let alcohol face it, face it for you. To the point that you become dependent with it. You can't live without alcohol. Alcohol is a sign of your celebration. Alcohol is the sign of your joy, peace, and happiness. There's nothing wrong about drinking though. But the problem is if it hinders your activities of daily living. And you know if you can't think well because you become impulsive because of it. You know it's, it's different when you don't drink. It's different. Now, how did I manage to get out from that uh, short, I, I'm not sure if it's short, but I think it's not short period dependence though. It was from tw 19 or 20 year old me to 23 that I keep uh, a bottle or two in the fridge plus I'm, dr I'm drinking with my friends. A whole night and I go home one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning or 12 midnight and then I sleep all day. I get up at 12 noon. And maybe I wasn't able to recognize that I got depression that time because I, did, I, I don't have a job yet. Maybe. You know, that's one way for me to really tackle my frustration that I couldn't get a job and I don't want to work any other job then, uh, which is not related to my, my course, the course that I finished, which is nursing. But way back 
2008, it was the global crash crisis all over the world, and uh, uh, low, uh, the, the you know the fraction of the people all over the world having no jobs, unemployed, have been rising, economy crash. I didn't understand that before, but I was, you know, I was suffering. I was suffering the effects of those uh, global crash, economic crash, because I, I used to be weak. I don't know what to do with my life. Basically, I feel like I'm going nowhere and disgusted with myself every day because I couldn't fulfill my plans at the moment future plans well some people call me goal oriented that I stick to my plans but I wasn't flexible though I don't have enough understanding about life that was my problem patience so I cling to alcohol and uh, go out at night no purpose wandering uh, early in the morning well, nobody could ever dare to rob me, to rob my, me and my friends. Because obviously, we don't dress up like rich kids or rich people. We, we, we're broke. Obviously, we're broke. Sometimes we slept. We slept in the park. Because we're, we have no purpose. We're going nowhere. We're unemployed. So that was the problem. And as time goes by every day, I, I suffer badly. I started to get myself up, like to get my shit together and uh, never stop finding a job, a nursing job. And I got rejected, rejected by different institutions and the criteria for nurses in the Philippines way back that time was quite uh, high because it's in demand. Unlike today, you know, they even put in a, a pleasing personality with a height requirement. Matter of fact is Filipinos are tiny. And they want to have a height of at least 5'1", 5'2". Jesus Christ, I'm 4'11". How in the world I was born in the Philippines? But that's the, that is common. You know, being tiny, Asian, is, uh, Asian Filipinos are common. And uh, the hospital institutions in the Philippines way back in 20, 2008, 20, 2009, they have height requirements. You know, to, to really filter the nurses that they're hiring because... Uh, uh, we have loads of surplus nurses that time. Unlike today, no more. So what happened was I was able to hardly recognize the problem. That the problem was I don't know what to do with my life. I was unemployed. Although that was helping me financially, but it, I have to solve the problem myself. So, and you know, Alcohol neg negatively, negatively impacts me. My health, my career, my self-esteem, that I have no confidence because I let alcohol solve it. So hardly pulling up myself to find a job in spite of the rejections you know, from different hospitals because I, I, couldn't, I don't even know what to say every time I submitted my, my uh, application and then the only time that really strike, struck me was that, you know, I must have a job. So the first employer who accepted me was, you know, I did submit my application twice. The first one was rejected. She saw me the first time. I wasn't looking great. I couldn't dress up well. The second time I submitted my, my application, I dressed up well. And then after a couple of weeks, I went back for a follow-up. I dressed up well, although I don't feel well <laughs> about myself that time. To the point that, you know, after like two follow-ups, she finally gave me a chance. She let me join, you know, the exam. And then I passed and I finally get, got a job. So that was the, you know, I th that was the first step of overcoming the, uh, my alcohol dependence because of the different issues that I have in my head, in my mind, in my past that I have to carry. Recognize the problem. The first tip. 
The second thing is, you know, the the second intervention intervention that I did was change my environment. Since I already got the job and uh, I feel like, oh gosh, I'm busy now. I got a job, but you know, the salary wouldn't be enough. But at least I have my experience and and all. So I started to limit going out with with some of my friends who, who drinks. I even learned to to smoke from my friends though. But, you know, I started limiting it, going out, hanging out with them. Maybe before, before you know, getting a job, I, we, all, we almost hang out every day, almost every day in a week. But when I got the job, maybe three times, twi- three times, uh, two, to, two to three times a month, we hang out together as broke. We were broke that time. Uh, but my friends now, they're in the different parts of the, the world. I'm not sure if they're broke, but they, they made it. They made their dreams come true. But way back that time, we were broke, honestly. So, yeah, I changed my environment. And uh, I tried to clean up my room every week. I tried to build a, a habit for myself that is good for me. And um, the most life-changing thing that I ever did to myself in changing my environment is when I set myself to work overseas, particularly in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, wherein alcohol is totally banned. So from hanging out, party, party with alcohol two to three times a month, you know, almost every week with my friends down to zero when I get to, when I got, got to Saudi Arabia. Now, you know, th- this is important, changing your environment. You have to limit or, you know, refrain or just don't hang out with people who drink alcohol. Try to be healthy, work out, change your environment. Don't stock alcohol in your house. Don't, s- as much as possible, don't see anything alcohol related in your house. Clean it up, you know. It's how you learn to love yourself. When you love someone, you don't want them to go bad. You know, you do anything and you do that to yourself this time changing your environment Uh, but to me I add up you know by setting myself up to work abroad and now when I got to Saudi Arabia it's another problem again and that problem was boredom I did some overtime but I realized though when I keep working and working over 48 hours in a week Jesus Christ that's not humane I feel like I'm not treating myself like a human so, you know, I have no parties anymore, but we have, we had a free gym and a pool in my accommodation. We, and we are also near the uh, big malls. I am in the, I, w- I used to live in the center of Riyadh, Alakaria. <laughs> I don't know if I ever said it right. So with that free gym, you know, having a low self-esteem to myself, I'm impulsive, still frustrated. I feel like I wasn't enough. You know, to face the world, I wasn't enough to go to America. I wasn't enough to, to fulfill my dreams. You know, it's so much hurt in me that I need to release it. Plus, stress at work. So that time, I made use of the gym. So I was overweight. I was 55 to 50 ki- 56 kilos. So I made a, a goal to, to, lo- to lose weight down to at least 50. So that was my first commitment number three is making commitment since i'm already there i've already changed my environment and i have no choice but to quit drinking commitment to quit drinking since i've already set myself up quit drinking and be healthy by losing my weight so that's what i did i didn't understand before what is the proper gym all i know is to run in the the treadmill So after three months, I did lose weight. Three months to 52 to 50 and beyond three months, guys, I went down to 47 kilos and I looked like sick. Well, I was happy enough to to have that. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I can do anything. So that was the life changing moment in my life that when I realized that I can control myself, I can regulate myself. I can do anything. I can go to America. I can go anywhere, everywhere. All I have to do is to work on that and never stop 
thinking about it, doing something about it every day. So I went down to 47 kilos looking like sick. I, I never know anything about weightlifting, about muscles, how to, how about cardio, all types and sorts of exercises. I just keep running on the treadmill. And then I realized that maybe I go up to 49 kilos, 49 to 50. Now I feel better. But I, my friends told me I still look like sick, maybe 40, uh, maybe 50, 50 kilos. And then I couldn't maintain 50 kilos, so I decided to take 50 to 51 kilos up to this point in my life. I keep the 50 to 51 kilos standards for myself this time. And that is a commitment. Commitment to stop drinking, to ha setting a clear intention to overcome alcohol and to love myself more and more each day. To, you know, to regain control, protect my health, and to be more present in every moment, present with my loved ones, present with people who are important to me. I couldn't be present when I'm, I don't feel good with myself and I drink. I don't feel that much present. My, my mind is still with my problems. Things like I couldn't get, things which are out of my control. I feel, still feel that I'm not enough when I'm drinking. But since I was in Saudi, look, I stopped. And I started working out, plus saving money. Plus, you know, since I'm still bored, yes, out of the 48 hours of working hours and uh, work out and my day off, I, I was still bored. But I couldn't manage watching a, a Korean, Korean soap opera consuming my entire hours of the day. So I did read. And then I read the money management books. I started out my first uh, website selling ebooks, which it, it didn't work. I started a, a, a blog, which didn't work. I started to invest some of my money in, in lending people with interest. Yeah, it worked, but I didn't like the outcome. But I, I did make money out from it. So I started to really work on myself other than uh, quitting alcohol. So yeah, number three, making commitments. Number four is, the next thing I did was I created a goal where I could channel my stress, frustration, anger, and impulsiveness. Impulsiveness, I channeled this to my workout. So way back that time when I was still just in, uh, most of my workout contains just a cardio. So I just impulsively increased the speed and then I realized, oh, it was painful. I even fell on the treadmill. So that wasn't great. So I, make, I made experiments with myself, in my workout. And uh, I channeled all the stress, frustration and anger through workout. Or I just walk, walk just within the compound, within our accommodation. It's a big space though. I walk around there, think of myself and then I work out. Sometimes when there's an extra weight there, which is not really that heavy, I just lift it. I don't know what's, what's this for. Is this for the bicep? I have no idea what I, what I was doing that time. I just, I was just clearly cardio via treadmill. So yeah, I made a goal and I learned to be consistent about it. Consistent and persistent with maintaining my weight between 50 to 51 up to this point. This point, hardly. This morning I was 51.5. Yesterday I was 51.2. So yeah, I must make some adjustments so I can keep it between 50 to 51. So this time I do love food stuff. But I stick to that weight. That is my standard. Anyway, another way <laughs> in creating my goals is I, I made, I, I journal every day. I, this time I have my vision board, which is not really that uh, artistic. It's kind of messy, but I'm, I'm the only one who can understand my vision board. So I write down my, you know, the things that I want to have every day. And way back that time when I was, I was still struggling to get over alcohol is that, yeah, I, I divert my attention to reading and basically work out. I keep in touch to the kind of person I want to become, the kind of person who have already reached my goals. And one of it, one of the, per one of the qualities of the person that I want to become is uh, financially free. So 
I get in touch. Even to this point, I still have that goal. So I read money management books, self-help, I exercise and manage my weight. In spite of all the temptations I encountered every day, food temptations. I love food, but I keep it 50 to 51. So you don't have to eat everything, all the best food in the world. You just have to yeah, give it a, a taste of it, take a taste of it, a fraction, a small portion, so you can eat a lot. You don't have to eat it all, but just a portion of everything. So I was able to build my workout habit since 2016, January. That was the time when I decided to lose weight. Up to this point, I still work out. And the latest one, you know, my goal, even for 2024, I used to be a late comer. But for 2024, I haven't been late going to work yet. Because, you know, I realized that there's nothing wrong with being punctual. With being punctual, you will never going to miss any opportunity. But there was one w once when I was late for three minutes and that's one of the you know, most awaited moments that you know I could invest in something. I could talk to this uh, investor and uh, a business owner, but I miss it because I was late. So I didn't do it again. That's why I decided not to be late this year and for the rest of my life. When I am hitting my goals, I will do my best not to be late. So it all started when trying to get my shit together plus commitment to quit alcohol. And, and then everything follows. Which is number five now. Learn, I've learned to love myself more. Self-love, self-care. This is another keynote. Self-care. So I don't compromise my values in order to be loved and accepted. I don't have to, be dr to drink alcohol in order to be loved and accepted. If people wouldn't take me as I am, I'll be happy enough to, you know, to leave or just keep it right there. You, know, you don't have to like me. I still wouldn't drink. Uh, this time, I prioritize my priorities. I make time with my loved ones. My favorite hobbies, yeah, reading, workout, and walking on a trail, walking on beachside. And I'm, I'm present. I try to be present now. This time, without alcohol. I can, you know, make it a commitment that you can say to yourself that you can live without alcohol. Alcohol, I can live without you. You say that to yourself. That's part of a commitment commit to that and once again when you are committed to something it means there's no choice burn out other option this is commitment whether you like it or not maybe someday you this this goal that you have may, may, may not going to be good for you anymore you can't revise it but leave the things that you must leave for your commitment since you since i finally say to myself that look alcohol i can leave without you then I don't drink. I am the kind of person who don't drink. I don't drink. I am a no drinker person. And that's, that become my identity because I love, I've learned to love myself and I don't compare myself to others, to others, to other cool people, cool and rich people who can manage to drink while making money, cool, rich people who can, who are in the position of big companies. I don't have to be like them. Leave it to God be the glory. I'm happy for them. All right. I never compare myself to people with more experience in terms of business, uh, business management, uh, startups. I don't compare myself to them since I just, uh, I just continue in my own pace and be consistent, persistent, and just change over time, change strategies over time until I get it. So, yeah, I do admit that there are people who are better than me, but that doesn't mean that I am going back to alcohol. Oh, alcohol, please help me. Help me. No. I got to face it. And I can work with people who are smarter than me. I just got to be useful. I can be useful. You can be useful. So we have, we, we have exchange of value. And lastly, though, since you finally understand the problem and you've made some steps to change and commitment to really stick to your plan, you know, your goal, and you've learned to love the process. Lastly, guys, stay committed to your long-term purpose. You can always revise your goal along the way. If you don't like it, okay, revise it. Tweak it a little bit. Don't go back to alcohol and say it to yourself. Alcohol, please help me. I, could, I failed. I failed. It didn't work. Alcohol, please help me. Commitment means, you know, as I said it before, 
burn down other options. Stick to it. Stick to what you've decided to, to pursue. For you to, you know, to be able to be resilient. So that's what I did. I was, you know, I've, after I got my first out, my first job, I've also encountered loads of rejections. Getting the, you know, another job to Saudi Arabia, another rejections for taking an English test, you know, IELTS, I fa- which I failed five times Engli- in the English test. You know, I got to deal with that, but I didn't call alcohol again to save me. Other than that, I, you know, some of the businesses which I started didn't work. You know, there's only one who did work, but I didn't like the outcome, so I still quit that business. And, yeah, the more I, you know, don't, the more I get busy working on things that made me stay alcohol, the more I don't need alcohol. I don't even think about it. So staying sober for a decade suggests that I was able to maintain the habit of not needing alcohol and to to be to stay in the habit which I built without alcohol. Working out, reading, trying to be healthy. Look, it's not it has it doesn't have to be perfectly done. I even go to fifty two kilos after I, I eat a bunch of favorite Filipino foods, Asian foods, and then I have to go back to fifty kilos. Work out a little bit of fasting, you know, which will take a couple of days. You have to enjoy life, but, you know, keep your standards as best as you can. You know, that, that's, that keeps me going, challenging myself. It neutralizes my anger, <laughs> my frustrations, my stress, you know, working on myself. And uh, if I ever make a mistake, though, this time, by the way, I, I drank last year, 2023, during the party. I just one drink, one bottle. I mean, no, it's a one glass. Last year, maybe that was 1%, 2% alcohol. Uh, because there was no bo- no available. No zero alcohol drink. No zero alcohol drink. And those zero alcohol drink available that time in the club or in the pub, uh, you know, it's, it, it doesn't taste good. So I have to be with my friends. And then I just drank this one glass for the entire 2023. As far as I can remember, though. But this time, from that day on, that was our Christmas party, by the way. I have no plans to go back to alcohol again. And staying committed to your long-term purpose doesn't have to be just like, you have to be stiff, you know, adamant about it. Just keep it, modify it over time. If it doesn't work for you, then change it. But don't go back to alcohol because you've committed not to stop. You're you're in the game now. Of uh, game of working on yourself. Keep taking good care of yourself, your loved ones, your relationship, building your empire, if that's important for you. You know, you're on, you're on a journey of no longer, you know, stopping alcohol. You converted your journey, you know, which is, I actually forget about it. It's my journey to really focus on myself this time. F, you know, I quit alcohol when I was uh, 25, 26. I went to... Saudi Arabia, when I was 27 or 28, and I, I'm 37 now, I'm, I don't drink. I don't need, I don't feel the need to drink at all. It's no point. And uh, it doesn't mean that I am a perfect person, but, you know, shit happens. But it doesn't mean that you have to uh, fight it with another shit, you know. So that was my journey of becoming alcohol. Uh, sorry, journey of sorry about it. Sorry, uh, my journey of uh, quitting drinking alcohol. So, yeah, I hope this helped you a lot. You know, in dealing your challenges in life, because you're not alone, though. You, me, the rest of us, we have personal problems. And we can face it in a way that, you know, we're tough enough to face life that, you know, as it is what it is. You don't need alcohol to go YOLO. You only live once. You don't need alcohol to do that. You can still able to enjoy life even without drinking alcohol or even smoking. You can enjoy life more without devices in which you can be present every moment. Joyous, 
moment in your life, you are there 100%. So I hope this episode today will do help you a lot. If you ever love this content, you can follow me in YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, even an Amazon podcast. Reinforce me, love. By the way, this is Anne, your fellow positive reinforcer. I do appreciate your time and have a lovely day ahead. Thanks.